the next uh, topic uh, of this long lecture will be about peripheral arterial disease. What is the definition of peripheral arterial disease? What is peripheral? What is central regarding uh, arterial uh, arterial system? Uh, the term peripheral arterial disease diseases affecting arterial system in a territory other than uh, coronary uh, arteries like lower extremities, carotid, renal, mesenteric arteries, and etc. Most commonly caused by atherosclerosis, uh, but may result from thrombosis involving vasculitis and uh, traumatic injury and uh, 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 aneurysmal degenerative whatever uh, the underlying pathology the term peripheral vascular disease is a broader term than uh, than uh, than uh, 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 than arterial disease than peripheral atherosclerotic peripheral arterial disease uh, the peripheral vascular disease involves the veins and the uh, arteries involves the veins and the lymphatic and the lymphatic system uh, so peripheral vascular disease means diseases of the veins, diseases of the arteries, diseases of the lymphatic vessels, while peripheral arterial disease uh, is the diseases of arteries other than the coronaries, uh, and it's predominantly an atherosclerotic process. Peripheral arterial disease uh, is highly prevalent, uh, and uh, but it's a uh, is highly prevalent disease, but it's uh, usually underestimated because of uh, many of these uh, cases are uh, asymptomatic, uh, uh, and if we use what we call it the ankle brachial pressure index as a marker of uh, peripheral artery disease, uh, there will be a very high prevalence in the range of four percent of the uh, population. The risk factors of the risk factors for uh, peripheral arterial disease are shared in general with the same risk factors of patient with coronary artery disease including age, diabetes, dyslipidemia, smoking, hypertension, uh, hyperhomocysteinemia, obesity, elevated C-reactive protein and chronic kidney disease. The risk factors uh, in patients with peripheral artery disease, arterial disease does not share the same power in contributing to the disease as in cases of uh, as in cases of coronary artery disease. And in one study, the probability of uh, claudication in 70-year-old man who uh, whose only risk factor was smoking versus not smoking was 2.5 versus 0.8 percent. Uh, 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 per per four years. Uh, uh, however, when the in the presence of additional uh, additional risk factor, uh, the uh, presence of uh, additional risk factor, the there will be synergism between these factors in uh, the causation of uh, uh, in the causation of uh, the disease, and these. Uh, there will be no summation, there will be synergism rather than uh, just numerical summation of the contribution of each risk factor alone. Uh, we have to know uh, this fact that atherosclerosis is considered to be an inflammatory disease and it's a systemic disease and uh, a systemic inflammatory disease and therefore it can happen in any territory, uh, any vascular territory in the body and uh, it's associated with uh, elevated markers of inflammation like C-reactive protein interleukins and uh, fibrinogenes. And these uh, elevated markers are correlated with the development and the extent of peripheral uh, arterial disease and atherosclerotic diseases in general. Uh, how do we investigate patients with uh, peripheral vascular disease, peripheral arterial disease, uh, these are a list of uh, mm, uh, basic investigations that uh, we usually apply in patients with peripheral vascular disease. First of all, the ankle brachial pressure index, uh, the Doppler ultrasound, the treadmill testing, and the magnetic resonance imaging, CT, angio, and contrast angiography. The ankle brachial pressure index is uh, an index, non-invasive index, involves the measurements of 
blood pressure using uh, Doppler stethoscope rather than usual stethoscope uh, for detecting uh, blood pressure in the upper limb and the uh, uh, and uh, the lower limb depending on the appearance of the uh, systolic signal by uh, handheld Doppler. Uh, the the boxes uh, here uh, in the r right upper corner of the slide uh, show the uh, uh, the interpretation of each value of the uh, this non-invasive it's, it's very useful it's a very useful screening test for patients with peripheral arterial disease so it is the ratio of blood pressure measured at the ankle joint to the ratio of blood pressure measured at the uh, elbow joint or the brachial artery using doppler stethoscope normal uh, ankle brachial pressure index is more than one ABI below 0.9 it has a high sensitivity and specificity for detecting angiographically significant uh, occlusive arterial disease. The toe brachial index. The toe brachial index is uh, an alternative way. Uh, you know that we have a sector of patients with non-compressible, non-compressible uh, arteries in in in, a, uh, in whom uh, the ankle brachial index will be super normal or uh, high. Uh, despite the presence of occlusive disease, and uh, this index will uh, will be a substituent for that test. It involves the measurements of the uh, occlusive pressure at the toes and uh, divided by the occlusive pressure present systolic pressure on the uh, brachial artery. A value of less than 0.7 is usually considered to be diagnostic for lower extremity uh, peripheral arterial disease. This is the Doppler ultrasound and duplex ultrasound. Doppler means just measurements of the flow and uh, the velocities and the patterns of flow are very helpful in diagnosis. When this combined with 2D measure, we call it duplex. And when this uh, 2D uh, image uh, contains color flow, uh, we call it triplex. It's very useful screening non-invasive test for detecting peripheral arterial occlusive disease. This is an MRA scan and it's also show very nice details it's very it's, uh, it's a uh, cost and it's costly and time consuming uh, some somehow time consuming but it, it does not uh, need intact renal indices for uh, and does not harbor the uh, harbor the risk of contrast induced uh, nephropathy or uh, radiation exposure uh, harmful radiation exposure uh, conventional contrast angiography is an invasive procedure, but it is the uh, is invasive procedure and uh, involves the use of radiation, involves the radiation exposure and uh, contrast exposure. But it's a gold is the gold standard for both diagnostic and therapeutic uh, procedures for patients with peripheral vascular disease. Uh, CT angiography is an non-invasive tool, but involves also the use of uh, contrast uh, material and also involves uh, involved with the uh, radiation exposure. But it uh, it gives us uh, very uh, valuable details about the uh, type, degree, extent uh, of uh, vascular disease. Uh, and uh, also with the 3D uh, or uh, read, uh, 3D reconstruction. Uh, it's very useful and invasive tool uh, and can be used as a substituent for conventional angiography. So uh, patients with peripheral arterial disease, as we said, uh, have different forms of presentation. Many, many of them could be asymptomatic and uh, the others could be uh, uh, could be symptomatic in a way of claudication and uh, the more extremes of this case what we call it extremes uh, or the uh, extremes of uh, arterial insufficiency we call it critical limb ischemia and uh, also the other one uh, which is uh, acutely uh, interrupted the blood supply and call it we call it acute limb ischemia the first mode of presentation, which we call it, is intermittent claudication. Uh, definition of intermittent claudication uh, is uh, 
is a symptom that involves the feeling of pain or ache or sense of fatigue or discomfort that affects a muscle group uh, with uh, uh, reduced blood supply, uh, particularly during exercise uh, and walking in cases of uh, lower extremities. The pain is usually relieved within 10 minutes of, uh, of rest and uh, or by putting the legs in dependent position. The location of the pain or the muscle group involved by the pain depends on the level of the stenosis, uh, like only the calf or the thigh, and calf, the buttocks, the arm, the jaw, and uh, etc. The claudication distance depends on the severity of stenosis, chronicity of the stenosis, and the development of compensatory collaterals. Usually, uh, uh, symptomatology-wise, and uh, the mode of clinical presentation depends on the critical balance between supply and the demand. You know that the blood flow, uh, uh, the blood flow in, uh, in an arterial tree depends on the uh, difference in the pressure between the uh, across a, a vascular territory and. Uh, uh, multiplied by the uh, radius of the vessel, the radius of the vessel to the power 4, uh, divided by 8 field viscosity and uh, vascular length. So, when there is lung stenosis, there will be significant symptom. When there is increase in the viscosity, like in polycythemia, there will be more symptoms. Uh, and there will be uh, when there is reduction in the radius there will be more symptoms and there's low pressure gradient there will be uh, more symptoms so the blood flow will be reduced in case of reduction in the pressure gradient and reduction in the radius of the vessel and also reduced in cases of increased velocity and increased in the length of the stenosis do we have uh, diseases that mimics uh, 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 intermittent claudication, yes, uh, uh, absolutely yes. There is, uh, uh, there should we should rule out different uh, diseases that can uh, uh, simulate uh, simulate the diagnosis of peripheral or uh, claudication or a vascular claudication. Uh, first of all, we call it the lumbar uh, lumbosacral radiculopathy uh, in cases of spinal canal stenosis or uh, lumbosacral uh, nerve entrapments, there will be uh, what we call the pseudo uh, claudication. It usually affects uh, elderly patients uh, and therefore uh, and therefore may coexist with in patients with uh, patients with peripheral vascular, i.e. the patient uh, could have both uh, peripheral vascular disease symptoms c combined with uh, lumbosacral uh, uh, spinal canal uh, stenosis. Uh, this, uh, this table uh, uh, contains uh, some uh, comparison between the spinal canal stenosis and the uh, vascular intermittent claudication. Uh, usually, uh, uh, symptoms in a way or another uh, are similar, but with more uh, in, in neuropathic symptoms in forms of tingling, weakness, and numbness in the uh, uh, spinal canal stenosis. Uh, uh, sites of territory uh, may be not uh, totally uh, differentiating because it depends on the territory of the vessel or the nerve segments that are affected. Uh, usually, uh, the intermittent claudication is exercise induced, uh, while uh, spinal canal stenosis shows variable response, usually, usually at rest or long standing. Uh, walking distance in both of them uh, is variable, uh, but uh, usually it is predictable in patients with intermittent claudication, while uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, look like this uh, in patients with spinal canal stenosis. Uh, uh, standing uh, provocation is usually more characteristic of spinal canal stenosis. Uh, uh, relief of discomfort is usually by rest, uh, while sitting position uh, 
uh, is uh, is important or changing the leg position is also important in patients with uh, neurogenic claudication uh, usually patients with neurogenic claudication have history of low back uh, pain while patients with intermittent claudication have history of risk factors that predispose to uh, athero uh, sclerosis. The other differential diagnoses uh, uh, which are uh, less important than neurogenic claudication include arthritis, primary muscle disease, and patients with chronic venous insufficiency, uh, uh, what we call it venous claudication. This slide shows some physical signs that could be present, involves the presence of we uh, what we call it <coughs> uh, absent pulses or weak pulses we could have brewy uh, we could have changes in the skin color either at rest or uh, related to positions uh, um, coldness of the uh, skin and uh, lower extremities decreased capillary refilling time uh, the skin is dry scaly atrophic uh, and uh, loss with loss of hair the nails will be brittle and uh, easily uh, easily uh, um, um, easily falls or uh, uh, destructed and there might be uh, non healing ulcers uh, or uh, poorly healing uh, wounds um, what is capillary refill time, which is an important sign of uh, uh, peripheral uh, vascular disease, is a test, a bedside test that uh, should be performed in a work temperature uh, where uh, a finger or uh, an arm are held at the heart level and you have to press on the skin to produce blanching uh, and we measure the time in seconds uh, for the blanched skin to return to the same color of underlying skin. If the capillary refill time uh, is exceeds two seconds, uh, then it will be uh, prolonged and it indicates the presence of uh, uh, ischemia, dehydration, uh, uh, or hypoperfusion, or hypoperfusion. This slide uh, shows uh, the color changes that we speak about. You see in the first image the uh, fingers are uh, uh, dystrophic, the, the, change, uh, the, change, uh, the skin changes uh, around the big toe and the other toes uh, uh, and the other toes uh, you can see it's uh, uh, relatively thin, uh, dry, and scaly. You can see atrophic changes in the muscle with different color response uh, of the skin. You can see what we call it a dry gangrene of the uh, these middle toes. Uh, and also this show, uh, the, the other one is showing uh, uh, um, atrophic changes in the nail. We can see that the demarcation uh, this is non-healing uh, foot, uh, finger, uh, big toe ulcer, uh, and this is a, a, a dusky cyanose limb with demarcation uh, line indicating impending gangrene. Um, this is a, 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 a classification of uh, peripheral uh, vascular disease uh, uh, or peripheral vascular insufficiency, uh, peripheral arterial insufficiency patient according to their severity. This is in a way or uh, another similar to what we call it angina classification, similar to NEHA classification for heart failure. Uh, uh, for heart failure. Uh, uh, this involves the Fontaine classification and the uh, Rutherford classification. So how do we uh, treat patients with peripheral arterial disease? Uh, treatment lines involves uh, uh, the following goals. Uh, we should reduce, as we said, prevent or, or reduce the cardiovascular morbidity and mortality associated with this form of the disease, and then to improve the quality of life by decreasing symptoms of claudication, eliminating rest pain, and uh, preserving limb viability and limits uh, the option of amputation. So, uh, achievement of these targets uh, requires the uh, uh, some conservative therapeutic measures uh, like risk factor modulation, uh, giving antiplatelet therapy, giving anticoagulant uh, 
uh, keeping in mind that anticoagulant is not superior to antiplatelets anti in production of uh, extra uh, in, in production of relief and it also produces an extra risk of bleeding. Uh, other pharmacologies like silastazole, uh, which is a phosphate diesterase 3 inhibitor, toxifylene uh, may, may help improving the working distance. Uh, uh, exercise is very important. Uh, it's very uh, it's very important tool in uh, helping the patient to uh, ameliorate uh, the symptoms of working and improves uh, quality of life. Uh, the other way uh, of achieving our targets is the use of percutaneous therapy. Uh, uh, by angioplasties and uh, surgical treatment by uh, using uh, 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 bypass grafts. The other form of uh, peripheral artery disease is what we call it the critical limb ischemia. The critical ischemia really uh, refers to the reduction in the blood flow uh, to the limb in a way that it threatens, threatens the tissue viability. Here the limb is threatened clinically characterized by being cold with pain and prosthesia that worsens by leg elevation and improves by uh, uh, putting the leg in dependent position. The pain is very severe. Even the patient cannot tolerate weight of the clothes, usually associated with pallor, cyanosis, fatigue, fissuring, ulcers, and gangrene. Uh, it, uh, it means that the critical limb ischemia means that the blood supply is just enough to keep the limb viable uh, but it's not enough to maintain the organ function. How do we treat patients with a critical limb ischemia? Uh, it involves the same line uh, of treating claudication, uh, like risk factor modification, caring of the wound, uh, most importantly, revascularization if possible, and then uh, primary amputation when there is uh, a complication. Uh, spinal cord stimulation and lumbar sympathectomy are also helpful in relieving pain, hyperbaric oxygen, therapeutic angiogenesis, and prostaglandins are uh, of controversial role in treating this entity of peripheral arterial disease. Acute limb ischemia. Uh, the other um, symptom and the other presentation of the spectrum of peripheral arterial insufficiency is the acute limb ischemia. It's very important. Uh, it's very uh, um, important category of this uh, spectrum. Uh, it's considered to be an emergency. Uh, it, uh, it happens when the arterial occlusion suddenly uh, reduces the blood flow to the organ uh, 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 where uh, the, the, there is no time, sufficient time to uh, for the collaterals to develop to keep the organ uh, survival. Uh, uh, the clinical presentation to, is considered to be an acute if the symptoms occurs within two weeks after the uh, symptom onset. Uh, uh, usually the symptom develops over hours to days and the range, uh, it range from new or worsening intermittent claudication to pain at rest, prosthesia, muscle weakness, paralysis of the affected limb. The physical findings of patients with acute limb ischemia include the absence of distal pulses, cold, uh, cool and pale skin with mottling, uh, reduction of the sensation, sensation and decrease in the muscle strength. These features can be often grouped into the five Ps, prosthesia, pain, pallor, pulselessness, and the paralysis. Uh, in contrast to chronic limb ischemia, usually uh, in which a collateral blood vessel may compensate for the occluded artery, acute ischemia threatens the limb's viability because there is no sufficient time for the new blood vessel growth to compensate for the loss of perfusion. Therefore, urgent recognition and prompt revascularization is very important in these situations. Uh, as we said before, that we have got we've got peripheral uh, arterial disease, peripheral vascular disease. Vascular disease, uh, uh, vascular disease involves arteries and veins and lymphatics. Uh, thrombangitis obliterans is one of the examples of this form of the disease. Also, thrombangitis obliterans is is uh, is a form of non-atherosclerotic, non-atherosclerotic. Uh, 
uh, peripheral uh, vascular disease. Uh, the Berger's disease is a segmental vasculitis affecting the uh, upper and lower extremity arteries, veins, nerves, and occurs characteristically in young male who smokes heavily. Uh, usually, it affects the medium-sized uh, vessels, uh, affects the ulnar, radial, digital, peroneal, plantar, and uh, foot digital arteries. Sometimes there are there is involvement of the coronary and renal, and cerebral uh, and mesenteric and aortoiliac arteries. The clinical presentation of Berger's disease uh, it usually affects males. Um, presentation in, in the form of a different spectrum of arterial insufficiency uh, like claudication, uh, critical ischemia involving pain, digital ulceration, or sometimes uh, Raynaud phenomena that is associated in 45% of the cases, and with affection of the superficial veins in forms of thrombophlebitis. Usually, uh, the patients have the following signs like uh, weak pulses uh, or absent according to the severity of the and the site of the vessel involved, features of acute limb ischemia, tender subcutaneous nodules, and tender veins indicating uh, superficial uh, thrombophlebitis. Characteristically uh, uh, and geographically, the uh, vessel the vessel will show uh, arterial occlusions uh, plus the presence of uh, small what we call it crocs crew collateral spiral uh, crocs crew. Uh, collaterals. This is a characteristic and geographic findings in patients with Berger's disease. The treatment of Berger's disease is uh, to quit smoking, uh, angioplasty, and uh, surgical options are very limited. Many of them uh, are uh, treated with, uh, uh, many of them will end up with amputation. Approximately 50% of them will end up with amputations. Uh, now, uh, the other uh, vascular phenomena is the, we call it the Raynaud's phenomena. Raynaud's phenomena uh, uh, is uh, a triphasic uh, color response uh, of a limb uh, 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 involved uh, pallor of the digits progressing to cyanosis with pain and then uh, often numbness followed by reactive hyperemia on rewarming. It is a basospastic phenomena uh, that is often precipitated by cold exposure or stress. Uh, the primary Raynaud's phenomena uh, is uh, the presence and involves the presence of this triphasic color response of the skin and symptoms and when happens alone without uh, underlying cause, while secondary Raynaud's phenomena uh, is described in the context of other systemic diseases like connective tissue diseases. The clinical manifestation uh, classically involves the triphasic color response. It usually happens in up to 65% of the cases. Usually happens in the fingers, but it's not limited to the fingers. It can happen in the toes, nose, ears, lips, and other sides of the body. Primary Raynaud's phenomena happens alone. Uh, and usually they have normal physical examination between attacks, while secondary Raynaud's phenomena may harbor the underlying features of underlying uh, disease, namely scleroderma. The diagnosis is usually uh, clinical and uh, uh, also uh, markers of underlying disease. Usually persistent cyanosis is not a feature of this uh, phenomena. Finally, uh, uh, as a home message, patient with uh, peripheral vascular disease is considered to be a high risk one uh, um, because of, um, as we said, that uh, peripheral uh, atherosclerosis is a, a systemic process and the likelihood of coexisting coronary artery disease is uh, very much prominent and we need to consider that uh, disease to be present in a patient with peripheral vascular disease, therefore they should be, uh, they are considered to be uh, high risk cases.